Hey everyone, it's Arielle Herrera here, your fellow data scientist at Analytics Arielle, where we simplify analytics just for you. Now, are you a real estate investor looking to leverage new technologies to find great deals? Well, you're in luck because today we're going to go over three big data trends that you can utilize. So stay tuned. This episode, you're going to learn three big data trends for real estate investors. Given the rise of technology and big data, we as investors have so many tools available to use in order to find great deals. By understanding the big data trends occurring now, you can adjust your investment strategy to remain ahead of the curve and to increase your cash flow. By the end of this, my goal is for you to start thinking of how you can employ these trends in your strategy to increase your real estate portfolio. With that, let's get started. So what are real estate investors really looking for? We're looking for a great deal, a home that cash flows, meaning after all expenses like utilities and the mortgage, we still have money coming in. The more money, the better. How do we find great deals? From Bigger Pockets YouTube video, 10 Awesome Strategies for Finding Great Real Estate Investment Deals, Brandon Turner provides 10 ways to find great deals. For those that don't know Bigger Pockets, it's the largest online community and resource for real estate investing, so I highly suggest checking them out after this video. On the top of the list to find great deals is the MLS. This is also known as the Multiple Listing Services, where agents can post and view homes for sale. Driving for dollars is another tactic, where you actually get into your car and drive around town to see homes in distress. This means homes that are not maintained. They may have tall grass or a rusted fence. The idea is you can find a home that would be of cheaper value to buy than if you were to go the traditional route on the MLS, where there is more competition. Another strategy is using wholesalers. Wholesalers do the work of finding these distressed properties and bring you the deal for a premium markup. This has backfired on some people, but it's still a strategy nonetheless. With so many options, this makes us wonder, is there another way we can find great deals? A way that is simpler, more straightforward, and takes much less physical effort on our part. I don't know about you, but I drive a hoopty, so the driving for dollar strategy does not work for me. Well, we're in luck because in the 21st century, we have one of the biggest assets that the human race has ever seen, this being technology. And within technology, we can leverage big data. Big data may sound intimidating, and you're probably wondering, how do I even get started? Well, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you get up to speed on new technologies to enhance your investment strategy. So let's build your foundation of knowledge together. I'm going to show you three big data trends so that you can crush it the next time you're looking for data to find awesome properties. First, we need to tackle the elephant in the room. What's wrong with the MLS? The traditional data source of all real estate data stems from the MLS. MLS stands for Multiple Listing Service. It's used between agents and brokers. The MLS grants them access to exchange property listing information, such as the home price of a property, attributes like if a home is a single or multifamily, and buying conditions such as cash only or conventional. This data used to be private. This offered a competitive advantage for investors that had access. Maybe you were an investor who had a real estate agent on your team, or you were a real estate agent too. You could use the MLS to access listings first and find deals without relying on a traditional realtor. Now there are companies like Zillow and Redfin that aggregate this data into a public view. Because the data is available to everyone, it is no longer an advantage for investors. That's why we need to look at other data sources to get an edge. Here's an example of one of the popular websites, Zillow, that aggregates all of the MLS data for the public to see. You can get data such as a home price, 
a type of home such as single family, and details like the type of cooling system, all at your fingertips. With every investor having this information, how do we keep an advantage? Well, we can use big data. Let's see how. First, we can monitor foot traffic. Foot traffic is the presence of movement of people walking around in a space. In the past, commercial real estate companies, like a mall, would actually employ people to stand up a clipboard to manually tally how many people were coming in and out of a store. For example, in a jewelry store, you can expect to see larger foot traffic during peak seasons, like the holidays and Valentine's Day. In real estate, foot traffic can help to identify patterns near a property. Let's imagine you are a landlord for a commercial real estate property, like a strip mall. It would interest you to see how your foot traffic is increasing or decreasing over time. In our case, our strip mall has two retail stores. We monitor foot traffic and see that each store generates a small amount of people entering their stores daily. However, when we focus in on our stores in the food service industry, like Sue's Coffee Store, we notice a spike of traffic. There is a high foot traffic throughout the day to the store. We continue to monitor traffic and notice in general our service-based stores, such as restaurants like Sue's Coffee Store and spas, have way more foot traffic on average than our retail businesses that sell clothing. We can use this information to help make decisions for what future tenants we want to fill vacancies. We should focus on filling our vacancies with service-based stores since they generate more foot traffic and become more sustaining businesses. What does that mean for us landlords? We get long-term tenants with less chance of failing businesses that end up bailing. It's a win for us. The next big data trend we want to look at is web scraping for job postings. Job postings are an advertisement created by a recruiter that alerts the public of a job opening within a company. Job postings used to be posted on bulletin boards or referenced by word of mouth. Lucky for us, we can get all job postings information on the web. Investors frequently seek out markets that are hiring occupations that are high in demand for the future. In-demand occupations can mean stable tenants and market growth. For example, as baby boomers age into retirement, there is an increase of demand for nurses. By locating areas that are hiring nurses the most, you can target which markets you want to invest in. We look to scrape information on job postings for nurses. One of my favorite sources for this is Google Jobs. From our web scraping, we can then map out each job related to nursing on a map. From the information, we can see there's a huge demand for nurses in the Jacksonville area of Florida. With this information, what actions can we take? We can look at commercial real estate properties with units meant for medical facilities, such as a doctor's office, nursing home, and other private practices. We can also look at single-family homes in neighboring towns. If there's an influx of nurses in the area, they'll need a place to live, right? The neighborhood where they work may be too expensive, so we can look at close neighborhoods that expect high demand of renters. Also, by tracking a profession like nurses, we can expect some of them to continue their education. This may be an indication for us to invest in multifamily homes in close college towns to the facilities in Jacksonville, which they work in. I would be doing an injustice to big data if I didn't mention social media. Social media posts contain rich information on public opinions posted by users. These posts can be distilled using sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis is an AI method that can classify text data as positive, negative, or neutral. For example, if I had a Twitter account when I was five years old, if my mom gave me green beans, I would have written aggressive, angry tweets, a negative sentiment. My standard meal chicken fingers would make me feel passive, a neutral sentiment. Now, if ice cream was on the table, don't let me get started on Carvel ice cream, crunchies. I would have been so happy my sentiment would be ultra positive. Now that we know what sentiment analysis is, let's discuss how we can use social media and news data. We have a new investment area in mind. 
Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. We want to invest in properties close to Manhattan since we've seen trends of people moving outside of the city. We want to know if we should invest in the area. What would be a good indicator of the town's perception? How about the town's own people? We look at tweets to analyze the general temperament of the local market. Over a period of time, residents in Bay Ridge are posting tweets that have a negative sentiment. We dive deeper and see people are unhappy with the lack of transportation in the area. Why is this so? We do a bit of digging and wow, we see that traveling from Bay Ridge to Astoria during the morning on a weekday takes an hour and 25 minutes, I kid you not, when you're traveling by car. And it's only 13.9 miles. Heck no. Now we know why locals are so unhappy. So what do we know about this area as an investor? We are looking at Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. We know that's a trend of people moving outside of Manhattan to boroughs like Brooklyn. The residents of Bay Ridge are unhappy, and the reason is because of poor transportation. We can make an assumption that if transportation problems are fixed, more people will be happy living in the area, thus increasing the price of the homes. How can we keep track of our theory? We can use web scraping to monitor changes in the transit system for Bay Ridge. We decide to scrape or gather data from news sources related to our keyword, Bay Ridge and transportation. A year later, we are notified from our system that a dormant transit service running from Bay Ridge to Astoria is being resurfaced by the MTA. We obtain this data by extracting the text from the blog post. How are the Bay Ridge residents reacting to this news? We monitor the tweets for Bay Ridge and see the sentiment has changed to positive. People are happy about the new train line. This is great news. Happier residents means a more prospering town. This can signal for us as buyers to invest in the area. We track the public permits data to confirm the plan is moving forward. Our next step is to look for investment properties. We go on Zillow to find a multifamily home in a desirable area by the local park and highway. We run our calculations or financial modeling and confirm that without appreciation, we still will have cash flow. That way, we are not dependent on the property values going up to remain profitable. We make an offer that is accepted. Awesome. 24 months later, the transit system is completed. Now is when investors, residential owners, and commercial real estate developers start pushing an influx of cash into Bay Ridge. What happens to us? Well, we reap in the benefits of appreciation on our investment property because we got there first. Were we lucky? No. We used big data to get an advantage to determine an up-and-coming area before our competitors. I'd say that's a success. Hey guys, thanks so much. I really appreciate your time and I hope you enjoyed this video from Analytics Ariel. Make sure to subscribe because we've got a lot of awesome content coming up. Great, I'll see you in the next episode.